Thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, Ranking Member Portman, Ranking Member Blunt, and to uh, all of our colleagues uh, from the Rules Committee for once uh, again joining us to convene this uh, second joint hearing on the January 6th attack uh, on our, our Capitol building. Last week's uh, hearing provided really the first uh, opportunity for the American people to hear about the attack directly from the security officials that were on the ground. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Chairman Peters. Uh, if the witnesses could now please stand and raise your right hand. Do you swear that the testimony that you will give before the committee is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Thank you. You can be seated, and I'll turn it back over to Chairman Peters. Ms. Uh, Celesi, I think you are first uh, for your opening statement. General Walker, I want to start my questioning by going back in time a little bit prior to the events on, uh, on uh, January 6. So my question is, in June of 2020, as violence was escalating during the summer protest, were you able to immediately receive approval from the Secretary of the Army and the Secretary of Defense to deploy National Guard to assist law enforcement at that time? Senator Peters, I was. Yes, sir. The Secretary of the Army was with me for most of that week. He came to the armory. Uh, I was in constant communication with him when, he, when we were not together. So you were immediately able to, to, uh, to receive approval in June of 20. From your testimony, I want to be clear. You were, were, were you able to immediately receive approval from the Secretary of the Army and the Secretary of Defense to deploy the National Guard on January 6th? No, sir. In your opening remarks, uh, you said uh, uh, that a January 5th memo uh, was unusual. Could you explain to the committee why it was unusual and what was the impact of the memo that you received on January 5th? So the memo was unusual in that I was, it, re it required me to seek authorization from the Secretary of the Army and the Secretary of Defense to um, essentially even protect protect my guardsmen. So no, no um, civil, dis civil disturbance equipment could be authorized unless it was, came from the Secretary of Defense. Now the Secretary of the Army, to his credit, did tell me that I could have um, force protection equipment with the guardsmen. So we did uh, have helmets, um, shin guards, um, vest, we did have that with us, but that came from the Secretary of the Army. The Secretary of Defense told me I needed his permission to, to um, escalate, to have that kind of protection. That kind of protection, even though you would be engaged in force protection, that to protect your, your men and women, before you could do that, you would have to get approval from the Secretary of Defense? The, the memo from the Secretary of Defense uh, made clear that I needed his permission to to have, um, so what it says, uh, without my uh, personal authorization, the District of Columbia National Guard is not authorized the following, to be issued weapons, ammunition, bayonets, batons, or ballistic protection equipment such as helmets and body armor. Now, again, to, to be clear, the Secretary of the Army told me to go ahead and issue that equipment. So we never were going to have weapons or ammunition, and we no longer have bayonets. But we do have uh, ballistic protection equipment, helmets, body armor. And um, so I did have that okay. with each guardsman. Thank you, General. So, uh, but that was unusual, as you mentioned, to have that kind of request. You, you were on the, June, uh, the January 6th phone call at 2.30 that we heard in from our previous hearing, uh, where the uh, chief of Capitol Police was making an urgent uh, appeal uh, for help. Uh, and uh, we heard that the D.C. Metro Police chief said it was uh, a tepid response. He was shocked by it. What happened on that call? What was your recollection of uh, the call and were the assessment of the two individuals I mentioned? Was that your assessment as well? Yes, sir. So that, that call came in. It was uh, we actually helped facilitate it. The, um, the deputy mayor from the District of Columbia uh, and Dr. Rodriguez, Chief Conte, uh, Chief Sun later joined the conversation. And we dialed in uh, the senior leadership of the U.S. Army. And, and at that time, Chief Conti and Chief Sun 
passionately pleaded for District of Columbia National Guard to get to the Capitol with all deliberate speed. Um, so the Army senior leaders did not think that it looked good, it would be a good optic. They further stated that it could, for, it could incite the, uh, the crowd. So their best military advice would be to the Secretary of the Army, who could not get on the call. So we, we wanted the Secretary of the Army to join the call, but he was not available. We were told that he was with the Secretary of Defense and not available. But the Army senior leadership expressed to Chief Conti, Chief Sun, uh, Dr. Mitchell, the Deputy Mayor, and others on the call that it would not be their best military advice to have uniformed guardsmen on the Capitol. So, so during the call, you're saying that optics was raised uh, uh, on, on, on that call specifically. So I want to go back to the, state, the question I started. You said that uh, you were able to get immediate uh, authorization in the summer of 2020 during those uh, protests. Uh, General Walker, was the issue of optics ever brought up by Army leadership when the D.C. National Guard was deployed during the summer of 2020? Was, was that discussed? It was never discussed uh, the week of June. It was never discussed July 4th when we were supporting the city. It was never discussed August 28th when we supported the city. Did you think that was unusual? I did. So let's put uh, in context. You, in, in, in your opening statements, you mentioned uh, the National Guard troops that were ready to go. You, you had them back at the armory. How many folks were in the armory ready to go once the order was given, and at what time were they ready to go? So I, I had them ready to go shortly after the phone call. So uh, I brought, at 1500, I, I directed that the quick reaction force that was based at Andrews Air Force Base leave the base, get to the armory at all deliberate speed. I had a police escort bring them to the armory. They, they returned to the armory in about 20 minutes. So we had them sitting there waiting. And then in, in anticipation of a green light, a go, uh, we put guardsmen on buses. We brought them inside the armory so nobody would see them, them uh, putting on the equipment and getting on the buses. And then we just waited uh, to, to get the approval and that's why we were able to get to the Capitol in about 18 minutes. What time were they on the buses ready to go, do you recall? Before 5 o'clock. But at 5 o'clock, I decided, hey, you know, we gotta, we're, there's got to be an approval coming. So get on the buses, get the equipment on, get on the buses and just wait. And then a few minutes after that, we did get the approval. I, I was on a, a secure video conference when the Army leadership conveyed to me that the Secretary of Defense had authorized of uh, the employment of the National Guard at the Capitol. So uh, my timeline has uh, 1708, 508 p.m. Is when, um, is when we wrote down that we had approval. And right. that was about eight people in the office with me when I got that. How, how many guardsmen were ready? You said right immediately, earlier in the afternoon. About, about 155. Ready. So you could have sent 155 much, much earlier. What would have been the impact of sending those 155 right around that 2 o'clock time frame? Well, based on my experience with the summer, and I have 19 years, I have 39 years in the National Guard. I was in the Florida Guard, Hurricane Andrew. I've, I've been involved in civil disturbances. So I believe uh, that number could have made a difference. We could have helped extend the perimeter and help push back the crowd. Ms. Sanborn and uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Lova, last week we heard from former law enforcement uh, officials who stated uh, that a lack of intelligence reporting was the, the main reason for Capitol Police uh, not being fully prepared for the January 6th attack. So my question to both of you, yes or no, would you agree that the intelligence community failed to sufficiently identify the threat and warn the Capitol Police of a plot to breach the Capitol, that a plot that was planned in public uh, and announced in advance in a number of open sources? I think this is on. I'll start. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily categorize it that way, sir, uh, but I will tell you, I think you've heard us say before, there's not an agent that wouldn't want more tools in their toolbox. There's not an analyst that wouldn't want more intelligence, and I think I just paint a quick picture for you. The challenges we're faced are the immense amount of rhetoric out there, and what we're trying to separate is aspirational from intent, and combine in, and in order to get to that intent, 
we're really thinking about private communications and oftentimes encryption. And so I would say that what we are faced with is the challenge of the amount of data and then really trying to find, because of the volume and because of private communications, intent that then would have given us the intelligence picture potentially um, to shed light on what some of the plans and intentions, indicators and warnings, as our military folks might say. Ms. Mislova, quickly, please. Uh... Yes, sir. Uh, I will defer to you, Senator, your colleagues, and other oversight entities such as this one to actually determine what went wrong on January 6th. I don't feel I'm empowered or have enough information to declare whether or not this is an intelligence failure. I do know, however, it was not a success, and we will do everything we can to make sure that what we know is better distributed and understood by our partners. And um, to echo the Bureau's um, point, we will also do more to better understand how we can identify the next steps that we see in social media with this particular threat. Well, clearly we have to do a much better job, and I'm sure this will be explored yes. in depth in questioning from my colleagues here.